Hey, what's up everyone? Chris here from Bricklayers Union, and this is LEGO City Update number 6. And it's been a while since my last City Update video, and as I mentioned in my recent Channel Update video, I had disassembled and moved my city to take care of some home repairs. So I'm going to start by quickly recapping the changes to the room, and then I'm going to get into the changes to the city itself. So, let's take a look. So, the changes to the room were the result of a roof leak that developed, and those repairs included replacing some stained ceiling tiles, and also patching and painting a section of wall. And since I had to paint, I decided to paint the whole room this sky blue color, instead of the plain old boring white from before. And since I was in the painting mood, I decided to add some clouds to the sky as well, which I think looks a lot better as a backdrop to the city than the old boring white walls from before. Another change that I made was to replace the white folding table with some unused store fixtures that are not only sturdier, but also have some adjustable shelving underneath, which gives me room for some more display space, some more storage space, or a combination of both. Now, as for the city itself, the first major change was to expand the layout from four rows of 10 base plates to five rows of 10. Now, in the old layout, the fourth row, the one closest to the bottom of the screen, was the road, but in the new layout I moved the road to the fifth row and by doing that I now have space for four modulars instead of two here by the Grand Emporium. And as you can see, I've already added the Palace Cinema to this part of town. Now unfortunately with the Palace Cinema in this location you really don't get a good look at the building itself, which is a shame because it really is a beautiful building. So here's a look at a stock photo of the front view so you can see just how beautiful of a building it really is. Now the expansion also gives me space for four modulars instead of two over here by the Parisian restaurant. Now, currently the extra space is being used for some off-street parking for the restaurant, but more modulars will be occupying the space in the very near future. In addition to space for more modular buildings, the expansion also gives me space for another skyscraper over here by Independence Tower. And I actually am working on a mock skyscraper as we speak, so that should be added to the city in the very near future as well. Now this expansion didn't just give me space for more buildings, but it also allowed me to double the size of the Central Park. And as you can see, I've already expanded the fencing around the perimeter of the park, and also added some flowers and a statue. But I'm not really sure how I want to lay out the walkways yet, but the good news is I do have some time to decide that because I'm waiting on an order of 2x2 two two light bluish gray tiles from LEGO Bricks and Pieces. Now with this expansion will come more buildings and more buildings means more traffic and more traffic means the need for more parking so I use some 1x6 tiles in white to mark off a few parking spaces now originally I was going to divide each of the 32x32 32 32 stud base plates in half which would create parking spaces that are roughly 15 to 16 studs long which would be fine for smaller cars but most of my vehicles are longer than 16 studs so on this block here where I'm gonna have two modulars next to each other I had room to make the spaces bigger so instead of four spaces that are 15 to 16 studs long each, I made three spaces that are about 20 studs long, and as you can see, they're now plenty big enough to accommodate most of the larger vehicles in my city. Now, to make sure people don't monopolize these parking spaces all day, I've installed a few parking meters to ensure turnaround. Now, normally these meters would face the sidewalk, but here I have them turned around so they're easier to see. Now as you can see, you deposit your coin into the small hole on the right, turn the crank on the left, and up top, if you see green, you're good to go, but if you see red, your meter's expired, like this car here, and as you can see, he's already been issued a lime green ticket under his windshield wiper for an expired meter. For a more modern solution to traditional mechanical style parking meters, some cities are upgrading to parking kiosks which are usually located in the middle of the block. Now, like the parking meters, normally these would face the sidewalk, but again, I've turned them around so they're a little easier to see. Now, these work a little differently than traditional parking meters. With the kiosk, the parking spaces are numbered, and when you park, you go up to the kiosk, you input your space number on the screen, deposit some coins or bills or use your credit card, and you're given a small receipt with your time on it. 
and attendants will periodically check the kiosks and then issue tickets accordingly. In addition to the on-street parking for the general public, I also added some dedicated parking lots next to the fire brigade modular and also next to my mock police headquarters modular. Now these lots not only provide secure off-street parking for the fire and police vehicles, but they also allowed me to make use of some of these four-way road plates that I have a whole bunch of extras of. And I added some retaining walls to the rear of each parking lot. I built these walls using these 1x6x5 wall elements in light bluish gray mounted on two 2x16 two plates to span the crosswalk opening on the rear of each base plate. And finally, next to the police parking lot, we have some construction vehicles showing up here to the brown 32x32 32 32 base plate to get started on what's going to be my next modular building. Now, this modular will be a mock, and it's nearly finished. I'm just waiting on a bunch of parts to come from Lego Bricks and Pieces, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if any of you have guesses as to what this modular is going to be, let me know down in the comments, and if anyone guesses right, I'll give you a shout out in my next city update video. Alright, that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do. That is always greatly appreciated. And if you have a minute before you go, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. I'd also like to give shout outs to Victor D'Amato, Tran Vin Gwyn, Triple D Honey, and The Bow Brick Show, which is a fairly new channel here on YouTube made up of a husband and wife team that's not only sharing their love of Lego, but also passing their love of Lego on to their young daughter, which I think is really awesome. So, after you watch maybe 10 or 20 more of my videos, be sure to go over to The Bow Brick Show and subscribe and watch a few of their videos and let's see if we can really help their channel grow. And on that note, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.